All right, welcome back. I found a new way to um, light the CFL light bulb, and I'm using an inverter circuit. This is not a uh, spark coil, a car ignition coil. This is an inverter circuit. And there were two different circuits uh, that were on the Internet, and uh, this one here and then this one here that are inverter fluorescent light drivers, and they drive a CFL light. And um, or a fluorescent tube. They're using tubes uh, on these particular ones or the uh, light bulb. But anyway, I combined the two of them and uh, then put together what I knew about uh, the CFL and then the radiant energy charging and I made my own circuit. And this is a, um, a dual purpose thing. It'll run a CFL light or you can use it as a battery charger. You can do either one. And the battery charger part of it, and what's uh, valuable for me, is it's a radiant energy charger. And what that means is it's using high voltage spikes coming off a coil and going in backwards basically into a battery um, off of the circuit. It's not really backwards, but it, it's uh, a negative jerk off of that coil uh, regulated by a diode right there so it doesn't go the other way. And uh, what's weird about these circuits is on the negative part of the charge battery they come around and they go into the positive side of the drive battery and that's what differentiates them from the other charge circuits is these uh, radiant energy chargers use high voltage spikes um, into the uh, jar charge battery and then back into the positive of the source battery. Very strange, but uh, it, what it does is it conditions these batteries, knocks off the sulfation um, that gets on the plates of a lead acid battery and used in conjunction with regular charging, which on my circuit I'm using a wall outlet or a solar panel on the source battery, you can make these batteries stronger and that's why these uh, radiant energy chargers are valuable is when you cycle these batteries back and forth it makes them stronger because it keeps knocking off the sulfation with these high energy pulses anyway this circuit here I've got it all set up breadboarded here um, very very difficult it took me days and days to do this um, because of this thing right here that is three wires on one um, ferrite core um, center. It's not an air core, it's not solid, it's ferrite, and it's really a, a couple of chokes that I put together with crazy glue. I got them at Radio Shack and then wound the wire on there, and that has to be done exactly right, and that is on this um, um, circuit here. This one uses a different type of transformer than this one here, but basically what they have is they have a trigger that triggers the um, transistor that causes the primary to fire and then when the primary fires it induces high voltage in the secondary which lights up the tubes and what I did on my circuit was the same thing I just came off of the primary with a diode to shoot that radiant energy into another battery let me turn it on I'll show you the, the, the thing that I like about this is you get big bright out of it big brightness and uh, it does use quite a bit of energy, but it um, it gives you big light, and I really like that. This takes a second to load up the way I'm doing it here. Reason being, I've got this energy going into a big capacitor. That neon comes on at about 70 volts. And you can see that the uh, voltage now on the inverter is way up over 120 volts on the inverter. Now, the um, light is turned off right now. I'm going to plug the light in here, and this light will come on. And it's this big brightness that I really like. I really like this big bright. And you can dial it down with my dimmer switch up and down but you get the big the big light out of this one 
and I really like that. It's hard to see it on the um, video because of the, the way the camera operates, but that's coming on really bright. The downside is it uses quite a bit of amperage, so you have to compensate for that um, when you're doing this. But I have this plugged into a wall outlet right now into my source battery. You could also use a solar panel or um, just use the battery to charge the other battery. But um, what, what I've got it set up now is I can turn off the bulb here. I'm going to disconnect it. And this cap is going to load up here, back up. And I'm going to turn on the night light here. And that's a 110 volt night light. And this um, voltage on this capacitor is what I've been working with today. And I'm using this uh, capacitor with the night light to get the voltage down to where I can put it in that battery. And once it's down to a manageable voltage um, on the load, then of course I turn this off and it goes back up to those high voltage spikes. And um, which is what I want to put that into that battery right there. And watch this neon. This neon is going to come on here at about 70 volts or so. There comes the neon. And like I say, at this point, I can start spitting that into that battery using a cap pulser or just dial it down to a low amperage uh, impulse. And I can charge that battery up with this circuit. So anyway, that's the latest on uh, my uh, CFL battery charger using an inverter. And I'm going to pan this circuit real slow. I'm using Mart Hale's uh, light bulb here as a ballast resistor in conjunction with the 25 ohm rheostat, dimmer rheostat. And then like I say, I've got a wall outlet or solar panel helping drive the thing. And then um, it goes through um, a couple of 0.047 picofarad caps, a 400 ohm resistor, a 20 ohm resistor on the base. Uh, feedback uh, coil is only 13 turns, a uh, very s fine wire. The primary is 56 turns of the next size up in wire, I believe that's 20, 21 gauge. And then the uh, secondary is 450 winds of uh, 20, 26 gauge, I believe, on that one. And then uh, I'm using a neon right here, and then a uh, a um, diode, a 1N4007 diode for the feedback. The transistor, you can use one of two types, a 2N3055 or a TIP3055. you got to put a heat sink on this to keep it from getting too hot. They get pretty darn hot. But this thing works. Um, I'm real happy with, with what I found out here. and I like the fact that uh, you can use an inverter for radiant charging. And I never thought you could do something like that. It's it's just what I've learned. And uh, it's a nice thing. Put all these pieces together and you come up with something that you can actually use. Thanks for watching.